Hey guys, and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be covering a firefly system with a particle cascade. So, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into a new project in your content folder. Just make the folder that you're going to work in, or if you already have one, then just head there. Now, the first thing that we need is a new material. So, we're going to call this fireflies underscore m. Let's open this up. So we're going to be using emissive, so we want to change to a translucent unlit material. Okay. Now we're going to be controlling the color through the particle system, so we're going to get a particle color node. We're just going to plug this straight into emissive. Oops. Straight into emissive. There we go. Now we need to create a very familiar shape. So we want the ooh, radial gradient exponential. I couldn't see him there for a second. Let's multiply the alpha of the particle color by the radial. And we'll plug this into the opacity. And now we get a dot. Okay, so we'll close that down. Right click, particle system, fire flies underscore p. Let's open this up. Under required, change our material to the firefly material. Right click type data, new GPU sprites, we're going to spawn, we're going to change this to a 50, our lifetime we're going to have 10 minimum, 10 maximum, our initial size we're going to go for a maximum of 5, a minimum of 2.5, our initial velocity we want to have 5, 5, and 5 as maximum, and then minus 5 in all of the minimums. Now I've accidentally tabbed minus 10, so we're just going to change that. There you go, and now we have this nice randomized spray. Skip over color for life for now, we're just going to make sure that we get the spawn correct. So, right click, location, initial location seed. We're going to set this to 3000, 3500 and then 0, 0, minus 200. Next, we're going to go to rotation, initial rotation. And we want to give this an initial rotation of 5 to 10. And now we'll go back to our color of a life. Under the color of a life distribution, go to your curves and the second one, you can just delete that. The first one, click this little arrow to get your RGB values. We're going to set 10, 10, and then 0. And then we have a nice bright yellow firefly. Now, you notice that they're, they're misbehaving if I'm not looking at a specific point. You see they disappear. If you click this for the bounds, you see this little dot. This is our emitter, and this is our bounds. If that's not on screen, then they won't render. So what we need to do is we need to just set our fixed bounds and that will encapsulate the entire area that these particles are going to be in. So as long as you can see this area, they'll, they'll spawn. So we'll turn that off. We will save. Now we will drag them into the scene. We have a minus 200, so that can go to 200. That's fine. So there we are. We're gonna just place that in the corner. Now you're not seeing the full effect of these because it's daytime and you wouldn't really see fireflies during the daytime. So what we're going to do is select our scene light. We're just going to turn this off. It's a bit darker now, but it's still daytime. So select the sky sphere. And now under default, just this little yellow arrow for directional light actor source. Click that and it will make sure that it's not being overwritten by any light. Now under sun height you want to put this to a minus value to put it under the ground. So minus one. And now you get night time. It automatically updates it for you. Now I want my stars to just be a little bit brighter so I'm just going to turn those up. There we go. That's nice. Okay, so 
one thing about fireflies is they only actually light up while they're breathing um, in. If they're breathing in, they light up. If they're breathing out, then they they uh, they lose their light. It's an interesting fact for you. So we're gonna go into here, and we're gonna add something to all of this to um to use it a little bit nicer. So we're gonna do. We'll just move this up for now. You're gonna need a cloud texture. I've made this in Photoshop. It's tiling. Um, what I've done is I've made the white parts brighter and the dark parts even darker because I need a, a large amount of contrast. So we're going to use this as a mask depending on where the fireflies are in the world. So we're going to need a world position node. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to mask it because world position gives you three values for each coordinate, x, y, and z. Textures only work in two coordinates, x and y. So we only need the red and the green. So we want a component mask. And set it to R and G, because those are the two that we need. Then hold D and left click for a divide. And we're going to divide this value by 150. And then we're going to use this as a coordinates in a panner, so hold P and left click for a panner. Plug this into coordinate, click the panner and change the Y and X speed to 0.1. And then plug this into the texture sample. Now you'll notice if you drag this box the texture sample doesn't move, you get this nice windowed effect. That's what you should be expecting. Now we need to add this into our opacity, so hold M and left click for multiply. Take our first multiply and plug it in, the texture sample and plug that into B, and then place that into the opacity, and you'll get this nice moving cloud effect. This is what we need. In 2D, or on a plane, you get this. So, apply, and now you'll notice that depending on where these little fireflies are, some of them will glow, some of them won't glow. You may notice some are already a little bit flickery, like this guy over there, these guys. But we're going to change the particle system again. So what we're going to do with that particle system is we're going to add some movement. So let's first go to location and add a sphere, which will spawn things within a spherical volume rather than a square one. And then we are going to add an orbit. So, orbit. And now, in the distribution, we want 30, 40, and then 25. And we'll leave the minimums on zero, unless you want to force them to orbit. If you want to have some that will just float a little bit, like that guy there, then leave these on zero. If you want them all to be a bit orbity, we can change this. I mean, if we make them all exactly the same, you'll notice that they all fly about, which is somewhat unrealistic because uh, you always get some bugs that just linger. So I'm going to leave those down. We'll restart the level and restart the sim. And now you'll notice that we have some, oops, we have some flickering fireflies in the scene. So there you have it. I mean, we have quite a few there. We could turn down the spawn, um, or we could just leave as it is. You can make these smaller if you feel that they're a bit too big. You could make them bigger if you decide that they're a bit too small. Um, but that's it. That's our basic firefly system. Um, I hope that this has been of some use to people. Um, so. Yeah, experiment. You don't need to have them to yellow. You can go in and you can set their color of a life to a different color if you wanted them to be yellow and then fade out to black with their alpha of a life as well. Um, then you could. That way, that they, as they're disappearing, their color also disappears with them. Um, but there you have it. Nice fireflies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.